Are you still having the dilemma with the New Year's resolutions? I had this dilemma for a long time because I felt it's not quite the right thing to do, but also I thought it was real fun. Today, an episode on our hate-love affair with the New Year's resolutions, why they often don't work, is it really just a lack of discipline or is there anything else behind it? And about an idea, how to replace the New Year's resolutions, which is something which actually works for me and many other persons. So hopefully also for you, my dear listener out there. Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's me again, Anna Yelen, the Time Lady. Still in lovely Lapland, surrounded by elks, and this is no joke. As I'm recording this podcast, I can see a huge male elk about 100 meters from our house, searching for some herbs and taking one easy step after another. Where we are, by the way, if you look at the map, we are even higher than Iceland. We can never see the sun. But we still get some daylight, which is enough to make all the colors pastel. Because it's all day long like a sunrise or a sunset. And I tell you, it's pure magic. Everyone talks about the northern lights. And they really are with no words describable. But this pastel colors we are seeing every day they flash me the same it's always slightly light blue or rose or violet it's a cold pastel world up here and often when I'm recording my podcasts at a place like this I ask myself where you my dear listeners are maybe you are experiencing summer right now but Same for everyone is this. In a few days, it's New Year and maybe you are, even if you are doing it secretly in your mind, still thinking about doing some New Year's resolutions. Because hey, somehow it's still fun. But on the other hand, you're not that sure if they really will work out. It is a kind of a hate-love affair, isn't it? But don't worry. I think there are many people out there feeling like this. And however you feel about it, let's look at this a bit closer. Let's start with the love affair. Why are we actually doing them? I have thought about this. I believe that we humans love to plan things. Maybe you are someone who loves to plan the holidays more than spending them. Or maybe you are someone who loves to sit over your agenda and schedule all your activities, even if everything turns out differently. Some of us love to plan. Personally, I'm more the one who likes to do a planning for my personal growth or my personal development rather than planning events. And for this, the New Year's resolutions are a super idea. So the days before New Year... We love to start to think about it. Oh, what could I do better next year? We love to imagine ourselves better without smoking or doing more sports or eating healthier or being kinder, whatever. But we love the idea about it, so we like to plan it as well. But that is when the love story can become a hate relationship because. It doesn't always work out as wanted. Why? Many say a lack of discipline. No, I I don't think so. My three simple answers are these. Number one, because you give yourself one bloody chance. I mean one, that's nothing. And that's the first problem with those resolutions. You have just one go. Number two, the thing is, having unrealistic and high expectations of how something should be can create a huge stress and frustration. So it doesn't even start with a positive or good feeling. And like this, there is no way it will work. And number three, you don't really want to change. If yes, 
you wouldn't wait for the new year. You would change it directly. I mean, what we want is some kind of change if we do a New Year's resolution. Now, what is a change? The desire of a change needs to come from the bottom of your heart. It needs to scream so loud that you will change it directly, no matter what kind of day it is. Change is a path. Sometimes it goes harder, sometimes there are obstacles, and sometimes it goes easy. It's not something we can wish for and it will be there. It's something where we dedicate to do something differently than before and we need to accept that it also might take some time. So I want you to stop having a dilemma with them. And here are my two solutions. The first is very different from the second one because the second one really is a tool. So for everyone who wants a tool, wait for it, it will come. But my first solution is this one. Let go totally. Don't bother at all. Imagine if it's okay the way it is. Yeah, you heard right. Imagine that it's okay how it is. Does that calm you? Does it remove weight from your shoulders? Good. Then leave it exactly as it is because it's okay. This sentence always calms me. How about if it's good as it is? And then you let go. The second solution is a tool. Remember I said that one of the biggest problems is that we just give ourselves one chance. So why don't you give yourself more chances? Like 12, for example. Yeah, you guessed it right. I do those New Year's resolutions always in the end of every single month. It's based on the concept to take one step at a time. Often we yearn for instant gratification. We want what we want and we want it now. And this yearning often tricks us into biting off more than we can chew. Think about this quote. You can't lift a thousand pounds all at once. Yet you can easily lift one pound a thousand times. And that is what I want to say that this one time chance, like the classic New Year's resolution idea, is a very small chance to succeed. So every month there is this reminder popping up in my agenda, normally the last Saturday of the month, and I will sit down for a few minutes and fill out my questions. And I will direct them to you and you can directly see how they work for you. Which were your best moments of the last month? Which were the worst moments of the last month? How can you avoid them for the future? On what would you like to focus in the next month? What would you like to create? And how do you want to be as a person? And what would you like to let go? By the way, the reflections on letting go to be able to move forward is so, so underestimated and important. Often we hold on to things that isn't really serving us. And if you look at these questions regularly, believe me, it's going to make you feel better. I have other questions for you. Are you doing the same faults on and on again? If yes, why? And how could you change this? Give yourself more than just one chance. Give yourself a few chances to move in the direction you want to go. Or again, can you just let go of things? Can you let go of expectations you can't reach? Maybe it's just meant to let them go. You see, many questions and feel free to change them or create your own ones. But the monthly habit to sit and reflect of the past time and the time to come is a lovely thing to do. And for me, This exercise gives me a good present situation on myself. 
Since I'm doing this, the topic New Year's resolutions is no dilemma anymore because I'm doing the monthly ones and it has become a habit and a lovely routine. And between us, also the idea to do it 12 times is just an idea for you guys who like to have it structured and very precise. It's up to you to decide how often you want to do it. To end this episode, let me tell you a story. I remember one new year when I was a teenager where I was so tired because I had been going out the night before and did have a huge lack of sleep. It was the same for my friend Nicole from Arosa. Basically, we weren't in the mood to celebrate New Year. And I remember the discussion we had. New Year should have been yesterday. We were in the perfect mood yesterday. And I said, and anyway, why just once? Why just once a year? Time was passing by. It was in the month of February where Nicole and I were having a normal Saturday night out, dancing and celebrating life. And we were having so much fun that I remember me saying, this would be a perfect moment to celebrate New Year. I reflected, paused and said, come on, let's get everyone to celebrate another New Year's evening. And we started to talk to others about it. Why in God's name should we celebrate just once and is life not more than having to celebrate when a date is dictating this and so on. And in the end, at midnight, I tell you, half, half of the discotheque had a drink in the hand and we counted down from 10 to 1 and then Everyone, everyone was screaming, Happy New Year! And I mean, I, I thought it was hilarious. The philosophy of celebrating more than just once a year, a new start, could be something we could do more often, don't you think? To celebrate a new start. You can do this whenever you want to. And that is freedom, my friend. And we need new starts more than just a few times. You can do them as often as you choose to do them. It's your life and your time. And by the way, Francisca, I know you are listening to me and I know that you are starting something new. It's a big thing and I know that you are going to rock it. Now, my dear listener out there, however you celebrate New Year, I'm wishing you all the best for every single day which is coming. I'm wishing you that you can take your days with ease, that you can laugh about yourself, that you can be thankful of still being alive. Now, let's celebrate the time we still have. Take care and thank you so much for listening. Bye. And by the way, on the 31st of January, I'm giving a two days workshop and we will for sure be working on topics like this. If you want to join, just check out my homepage, tap Anna Yelen and you will find me. Take care.